This is going to be an extremely quick tutorial on how to make a 2.9 server. First of all, you want your server folder. Name it whatever you want. I'm naming it whatever you want. There you go. There's your server folder. Remember that. You're going to want to download a, this right here. You can read that real quick. Pause and read it. You download the installer. For sake of convenience, here's my installer. What you want to do is double left click it, install server, come to your wherever you put your server folder, put it in there, install server, hit OK. It's finished installing, so we just hit OK. Look in here, it's all there now. Very cool. Now we're going to want JDK 8, Java Development Kit 8. I'm going to be using version 301. You can use most of the recent versions, I think. It doesn't matter, as long as it's 301 or above. I will be using Windows 64-bit installer. You will probably have to make an account to download this from this site. Just put in random information, it'll be fine. After it finishes downloading, you can just left-click it twice and install it. Mine's already installed, so I'm not going to show it. It's fairly simple, though. Okay, now we're going to want to make something called a run.bat file. So we make new, do text, we change it all to run.bat, hit enter, hit yes. And then we're going to want to edit the text. This is what you're going to likely want to input. Now I'm going to quickly tell you what most of these mean. This right here is the path of the JDK8 file. It needs to, JD, this version of Forge needs JDK8 to run. Yours might be different. Just find your JDK8 and make sure you put this in. You want to find this in your computer's path pathing. These are for RAM. You can change it as you wish. This is maximum RAM allocated. This is lo a minimum allocated RAM. This is the name of the forge file, the forge server file. And this will give it a basic command prompt GUI. This pause will pause it whenever the server crashes. Okay, now you want to double click run.bat. It's probably going to crash first. You hit just continue that. I'm going to go change ULA to true. Very cool. Now we do left click it twice again, and it's going to load it up. After waiting a moment and you don't see anything else happening here, you can go ahead and close it. Because of its nature, you'll likely need to close it in Task Manager. You're going to want to close this. You'll know which one it is because it's going to have high memory. End task. You'll likely need to do that for the server unless you close it in-game by using a slash stop command. Come to the Arlcraft CurseForge page. Download Arlcraft 1.12.2 release v2.9. After it's downloaded, you're going to want to extract it to your server folder. Then you do, and then you're going to want to come in here. And everything should be set up already, but you want to make sure you have your server IP. You're going to find that by going to your IPv4, which you can figure out how to do in other videos. You can change your max players. And I would recommend leaving everything else alone for the time being, unless you specifically want to change something and you know what you're doing. Delete your world file. I have deleted mine. You want to double click run.bat and let it regenerate uh, all your files here. You will know if it's done loading if you get on Arlcraft and pull up your server browser. And it says it has at least 140 mods enabled. Depending on what other things you might add, it might say a different number. But if, as long as it says something around that, you're good. You're good to go. In your run.bat, I recommend setting your maximum to roughly half of your total RAM. Anything more might...